Erickson Production Center of Troy University's broadcast and digital network and Troy campuses around the world. This is Troy Trojan Vision News. Hello and welcome to Troy Trojan Vision News for November 18th, 2014. I'm Sarah Singletary. And I'm Courtney Addison. Thank you for joining us this evening. And a band of severe weather passed through the southern part of Alabama early Monday morning, and that left many students wondering how to stay safe and how to stay alert during a time of threat. Well, today I sat down with the Dean of Student Services to find out how students can use their smartphones to keep them safe. Troy University uses technology to keep students informed about their surroundings. The SOS messaging system sends alerts out to students in the case of bad weather, crime on campus, or any other major news. Dean of Student Services Herb Reeves explains the process of sending out these alerts. The process is very simple. I go to just log into the E2 campus system, send it out as a text message. Our folks from IT pick it up and they post it onto the uh, email system and send it out as an email also. These messages are sent during times of emergency only, but the time that you actually receive the text could depend on other things. By the time we send it out, you know, like mine, I get it instantaneous, but some people don't get it for several minutes after that. Some of that's the process and some of it too is, is the time in which we get the warning from either the EMA here in, in Pike County or um, from the, you know, some type of news source, but we try to look at the time. we, As soon as we know we're going under a warning, we try to send it out as soon as we can. You can sign up to receive these texts online at www.sos.troy.edu. Reeves adds that it's important to be sure that you fully read each message. To look at it when, I mean, because I know that students get so many text messages, but uh, I had some folks say that they got the text message, but, you know, because it was at like 5 something in the morning, they didn't look at it. The SOS system is a free service available to all students and parents are also encouraged to sign up. And once again, you can sign up for the SOS messaging system at www.sos.troy.edu. And when students aren't looking at their phones for emergency messages, they can routinely be found using the devices for social media. And there is a new app that is increasing in popularity amongst Troy students. Grishma Moral takes a look at Yik Yak. In the world of social media, there's always a new app creating buzz. The new kid on the block right now is Yik Yak. Yik Yak is a social media site that allows people to anonymous, anonymously like post their mind, I guess, just kind of speak their mind, speak their complaints, whatever they're thinking at that moment they can speak, but without anybody else noting, knowing who it is. The app allows people to post their thoughts and opinions, and users within a 1.5 mile radius can read what you shared. Some of what they say may be nice, but often it's not. It's a social media platform where people can basically go on a rant and not feel bad about it. Since there's no fear of knowing who said what, the app tends to fuel a little fire. Within the last month, it has been a platform for argument between the students of University of South Alabama and Troy, as well as the Greeks and the non-Greeks on campus. As a Greek, honestly, some of it, I just, I see it and I'm like, no, that couldn't have happened, or really, did that just happen? Um, but it's usually just, I throw it away. Not surprisingly, some students love using it, while others prefer to stay away. I personally don't post a lot, but I really like to look and see what other people are posting because it's a good way to take a break, you know, just kind of scroll through Yik Yak and laugh at what other people are saying. And I don't need to use it because it's distracting and I need to do better things on campus mm, than sit in my room on Yik Yak. Distraction or disturbance, that is for users to decide. But with nearly a million users nationwide, its popularity is undeniable. Krishma Rimal, Troy, Trojan Vision News. Yik Yak was released in November of last year, and earlier this year was listed as one of the most downloaded apps of 2014. And in our Trojan Profile series so far, we have met some Troy students with a variety of talents and abilities. That's exactly right. However, today we will meet a student who is part of a growing athletic trend and is turning into a competitive sport. Sherry Chanel has the story. Ethan Brown is a senior at Troy University and a CrossFit instructor who brings strength, energy, and motivation to people around him. He is never caught without a smile on his face, and he tells us why it is so important to stay positive. If you're negative, you do not attract anyone. Um, I'm trying to bring in as many people as I can and influence as many people as I can. So in order to do that, I have to have to stay positive. It's easy to get a negative attitude and um, to really want to quit. 
um, but keeping a positive attitude just really helps to put. CrossFit consists of movements performed at a relatively high intensity that test your strength, speed, and endurance. The workouts are constantly varied, never letting your body adapt. He tells us how CrossFit is challenging to him. Challenges that um, CrossFit throws at you. There are so many things to be good at, so many different movements to practice all the time, and I'm always up for a challenge. Ethan also finds time to come to the Presbyterian Church and teach PE to preschoolers twice a week. Principal Michael Alsop tells us why he enjoys having Ethan as a coach. He's uh, always upbeat, energetic, is very knowledgeable about uh, exercise, and, and he's just a real pleasant guy to be around. With a positive attitude and dedication like Ethan, that will take him anywhere. We can only expect a positive outcome in his future plans. To one day start a gym um, and own a gym and run a CrossFit gym. I'm not sure where yet. Uh, and then maybe if I continue to work out as I have been, um, go to the CrossFit games. And I really want to get up and into the elite level, so it takes a lot of work. Sherry Chanel, Troy, Trojan Vision News. We will continue our Trojan Profile series tomorrow when we find out which one of our Troy Trojan Vision News anchors has been a part of a nationally known TV singing competition. And now taking a look at news from around the state. Out of Montgomery, the Alabama Department of Transportation is advertising for bids to complete making four lanes on US 431 from Interstate 85 in Opelika to the Florida line. The last two lane stretch goes through Eufaula's historic district and some residents are trying to stop the project. And in Birmingham, Governor Robert Bentley is expected to make an economic development announcement during his speech today. The governor will speak at the Birmingham Business Alliance Annual Governor's Luncheon. Bentley is expected to announce a new jobs project and address other issues affecting the state and the Birmingham area. And also out of Montgomery, lead prosecutor says ethics charges were brought against House Speaker Mike Hubbard because a grand jury found evidence of crimes and not for political reasons. Acting Attorney General W. Vaughn Davis issued a statement today responding to accusations by Hubbard that the case is political. And still to come on Troy Trojan Vision News, the men's basketball team took on Old Miss last night. Stick around as Clay Yeager gives us the details when he joins us with sports. Scarves are becoming a fashion statement and there's a new scarf on the market that can keep you from getting sick. We'll have the details after the break, so stay with us. A ride on the New York City subway leads to a new scarf that promises to help fight the flu. I'm Chris Van Cleve. That story's coming up. actually generate nine times more heat than light. Switch to Energy Star light bulbs and you'll realize just how much cash you are really burning through. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. Now, the latest in Trojan sports on Troy Trojan Vision News. The football team has more good news after the win with Idaho. Montrez Kitchen has been named the Defensive Player of the Week for the Sunbelt Conference. Against Idaho, Kitchens had three straight interceptions as well as returning his third for a 28-yard touchdown. Kitchens' one-handed interception caught the eye of ESPN as the play made number four in the top ten plays of the day. He also tied a school record for most interceptions in a game as well as nationally with six other players. Kitchens is tied for fourth nationally with six interceptions on the season and is ranked eighth nationally for interceptions per game. However, Kitchens was not done yet as he had eight tackles in the game and is now leading the Trojans with 82 tackles on the season. Next up, the Trojans will not only have their last chance to get one more win, but it will be the last home game of the season. The Troy men's basketball team welcomed SEC opponent Ole Miss into the arena last night. Gideon Torbert gives us a closer look on the matchup. The Troy men's basketball team fell short to Ole Miss Monday night in its second largest crowd at Trojan Arena. Head coach Phil Cunningham wants to thank all the fans who came out in support. Well, the first thing I want to say is just a, just a huge uh, thank you to the, to the crowd. The crowd was tremendous. The students were there in full force, and they were, they were enthusiastic and, and it was, uh, it, it was a really electric atmosphere. 
uh, from, from A to Z, everybody who was involved in, in getting this done and the whiteout and everything. It was, uh, it was a great atmosphere. Freshman Wesley Person led all scores with 25 points, 20 of which came in the second half surge. He dedicates those points on how well the team connected. Um, just um, my guys were giving me open, giving me good looks, and I was able to you know, hit some shots for us. But we just kind of we kind of picked our intensity up. You know, we started getting steals on defense. You know, pushing the tempo and. It was a lot of energy, so, you know, just to keep hitting shots, you know, it kind of picked us up. Senior Kevin Thomas recorded his first double-double of the season, the fifth of his career, and posted 13 points in this match. He focuses on moving past his game and preparing for the next one. Before we came here, uh, Coach talked to us, and he was motivating us that we're going to be fine this year. You know, even though we lost, I think we're going to use this motivation to work harder. I know uh, guys are going to be <clears throat> even more focused and more more motivated, you know, to press forward, especially uh, when we face um, Georgia this weekend. So I think that um, this loss, you know, we just got to push, push it behind us, really, and just keep working hard and then just attack whoever's coming at us. Kadija Torbert, Troy, Trojan Vision Sports. Next up, the Trojans hit the road for the first time as they face SEC foe Georgia in Athens on Friday. The game, the time is set for 6 p.m. The women's basketball team opened up their season last week with Auburn last Friday as well as Clemson on Sunday. The Auburn Tigers were too much for the Trojans as they fell to 71-54. Troy was tight with Auburn in the first half. However, the Tigers increased the gap, scoring 12 straight points, while Troy had, fi had five missed shots and five turnovers in the last 10 possessions of the half. A similar situation happened Sunday when the Trojans faced Clemson. Troy was up by five points near the end of the first half, but Clemson took the lead coming into the locker room by scoring 11 straight unanswered points. The Tigers ended up winning 82-73, to and head coach Chanda Rigby says her team did not play as well as she wanted them to. We were right there in the game with them until the last media timeout of the first half, and uh, they really threw a, a three-quarter court zone press on us that really threw us for a loop, and we didn't really recover from it. Uh, drove on to Clemson, practiced at Clemson the next day, got really prepared and almost went away with a win at Clemson, lost by nine, but again was with them the whole way until the last four minutes of the media timeout. We kind of repeated that error again and, and took, a, took a fall there, but um, lost by nine to them and coming away with, with a higher level of play than when we went there. The Trojans will now have time to prepare for the Southeastern Louisiana next week. The volleyball team added to their losing streak last weekend as they fell to Texas State 0-3. The Bobcats started off strong at the very beginning as they had six, a 6-0 lead in the first half due to five attack errors made by Troy. The Trojans went on to lose 25-17 in the first two set matches and 25-19 in the third. On the offensive side, Simone Shaw led the Trojans with a team high of 10 kills. Defensively, Ali Dowdle led the Trojans with 13 digs while the team had a total of two blocks. Head coach Sonny Kirkpatrick says his team competed well in front of a hostile crowd. A uh, huge crowd. I don't know if we've played in front of a crowd that big all year. And uh, started out a little slow, but we, we competed pretty well against them. Uh, a difficult arena to play in. It's, it's a lot different than ours. And, uh, you know, we, we gave ourselves a chance to compete. And, and if you give yourself a chance to compete, you always have an opportunity to win. The Trojan season is coming to a close as they only have two more regular season games to break their 17-game losing streak.